Growing up, I don't particularly look like I belong to any ethnic group. My name is not uh, by, you know, by definition visibly ethnic in one way or another. And growing up in the Bay Area, I was one of few Arab families at my elementary school, at my, the only one at my middle school, and, and one of a, a few um, kids at my high school as well. Frankly, before the first war in Iraq, most people probably could not point to Iraq on a map. Um, I was often asked if I was Indian or if I was Persian. This Middle East and Central East uh, region to many people seemed to be one and the same. I think the change began for me personally after the first Gulf War, and of course I was only five or six at the time. But I became, I watched my parents observe them as they were watching what was happening um, in that regime. Uh, and I was a sophomore in high school when, when um, the planes hit the Twin Towers and I'll, I'll never forget when I heard the news, I'll never forget how scared I felt as an American and how scared I felt as an Arab and a Muslim, how literally in a matter of hours I felt looked at differently. I felt um, that I needed to know who I was and I needed to prove myself as an American, and yet I also needed to prove myself as an Arab and a Muslim. And it's the sense of proving oneself, I think, that has really come to shape a lot of our experiences um, after 9-11. I really wish that a drug company in America would have come out with a medication for us, like our own Paxil or Zoloft. Like you turn on TV and say, hello, are you depressed because no one wants to fly in the same plane as you? <laughs> Are you anxious because you resemble several people on the government's most wanted list? Are you angry because every time you go to the airport, you're randomly selected for extra screening? And you need Arabagon. I started taking Arabic lessons after 9-11, never did before. Joined Arab American groups, talked about it in my act much more. It became such a big part of me. And because all of us came together, like circle in the wagons to protect ourselves, we're like under siege. And then from that, we're like, well, let's collectively try to do something to, to define who we are the right way. People have been conditioned to be afraid of us. To, I can do an experiment, even you guys. I can say the same thing with or without a Middle Eastern accent. It can change the whole meaning. Watch if I said to you, hey, hey, wait till Friday night. We've been planning this for months. People be talking about this for years. It could be a party. Right? If I say, wait till Friday night. We've been planning this for months. People be talking about this for years. There are people who do not know anything about us but the worst things. I can't blame them for not knowing anything about who we really are. It's up to us to go out there and do that. I think that there are many factors that contribute to the mistreatment of Arabs in the United States. This particular event, I feel that it's enraged these feelings in so many different people. I am subject to discrimination, racism, and even hate crimes since 9-11. And to be honest, I haven't been the same since. What happened, you know, after 9-11, I felt like, was that we were so quick to tell people what we weren't. You know, I'm not a terrorist. I'm not an extremist. I'm not this. I'm not that. Uh, and not take the time to tell them what we really are, you know? My take on 9-11, I remember I was playing football in college, and, um, you know, everyday life, you're hanging out with the same crowd and you're playing football, you're a popular guy at school. And I remember I wasn't aware of what had happened just yet and uh, I walked into the cafeteria and everyone was just, had a puzzled look on their face and I was like, what happened? And I remember a good friend of mine, one of my closest friends, African-American and uh, he looked up and he goes your people is what happened they just bombed the New York they just bombed the, the, the Twin Towers like, my people and I just remember it was like somebody just stuck me with a dagger in the heart and I ended up fighting with him in the middle of the cafeteria and got into a big brawl that was probably the worst day in my life till this point. You know, till this day, people look at us differently. We had to change my, my last name, the spelling of my last name, because it had a lot in it. So I had to take out an L and an A so it doesn't seem so Arab. Um, I, was gonna be, I was being discriminated against when I was 
interviewing for jobs because he said spoke Arabic fluently. I remember one of my counselors, I mean, you know, had good grades and I kept going for interviews going, why is everybody getting these internships and I can't get an internship? And she said, well, because you're Arab, you might want to take out that you speak Arabic. And that was just like a smack in the face. So it was a very hard time for my people, for me especially. And um, it, I, I, it really opened my eyes to the ignorance of individuals that they'll just mark you as that radical Muslim or that radical individual or group that can do such obscene and, and, and violent and just unhumane things. So September 11th was a very, very defining moment for our country. It was a defining moment for the world. It was a defining moment for Arab Americans. Um, I remember waking up that morning and I was in college and I was living at home at the time and I remember, you know, I was half asleep and went into my parents' room and my dad was freaking out. He's like, oh my gosh, please God, don't let it be Arabs. Please God, don't let it be Arabs. And I'm looking at the news and I think it was the first tower had been hit. And my dad's like, oh my gosh, this is huge, this is huge. Oh my God, please don't let it be Arabs. And of course, why was he thinking that? Well, it's because we already had a stereotype previous to September 11th that Arabs were terrorists. And so he was basing it off that stereotype and, and not wanting it to be people that come from the same lands that we historically did. Because what would that mean for us? And so I remember being in a daze that morning and driving to school and on the radio. I, I don't remember what radio commentator it was, but I remember, distinctly remember commentator is saying these folks these Palestinians are ants they're ants we need to be, destroy them they've done this to us they've done this to us now of course Palestinians were never a part of September 11th but the notion that the Palestinian is the terrorist I ex it just it just gives support to the idea that existed way before September 11th and I remember feeling such conflict within my heart. Here on one end, I'm an American, and I'm so angry and so upset about what has happened to our, to my country and to my fellow brethren. Yet on the other hand, I'm hearing the hostility and the anger already, without even knowing who had who had done this, towards Palestinians, the people, the rich culture, beautiful culture, culture that I come from. These cultures were are are part of me and who I am, and yet. There was this conflict that day and days preceding that. I remember walking onto campus and I came across an African American friend of mine and he looked at me and I looked at him like, it sucks. He's like, it does. He's like, you're going to know what it feels like to be black now. And those words still echo in my ear till this day. I will never forget that. <laughs> 